Hi, this video is going to be looking at enzymes. It is part two of two. So if you haven't seen the first video yet, please watch that first and then come back to this section. To start off, I'm just gonna quickly go over what an enzyme actually is. An enzyme is a biological catalyst and a catalyst is a chemical that speeds up the rate of a reaction without it being used up in the reaction. A molecule that an enzyme acts on is called a substrate. Usually enzymes only catalyze one reaction and this means that they have an active site that is specific for the substrate that they are acting upon. The enzyme catalyzing process has four stages. The first stage is where the enzyme is free to catalyze reaction. The second stage is whereby the substrate fits into the active stage of the enzyme and attaches itself to the enzyme. The third stage is where the reaction takes place and the final stage is where the new products are released and the enzyme is free to catalyze another reaction. The function of enzymes is affected by temperature and pH. Let's first have a look at temperature. Enzymes in the human body have evolved to work best at body temperature, which is 37 degrees. At this temperature, the rate of reaction is at its greatest, and we say that the enzyme's optimal temperature is 37 degrees. A temperature above or below 37 degrees results in a lower rate of reaction. For the exam, you may be asked to plot a graph that shows the rate of reactions of enzymes when the temperature that the enzymes are operating in changes. So here we have a graph. On the x-axis we have temperature, and this is in degrees C. And on the y-axis we have a rate of reactions. So let's start from a temperature of 0 degrees C and start increasing our temperature and see what happens to the rate of reactions. As we increase the temperature from 0 degrees, the rate of reaction increases. This is because the molecules in the enzymes and the substrate have more energy. As they both have more energy, the likelihood of them colliding increases and so does the rate of reaction. The rate of reaction will continue to increase until the optimal temperature, which is 37 degrees. When the temperature rises above 37 degrees, the proteins that the enzymes are made up from start to break down because of the excessive heat. This process is known as denaturing and usually starts to occur when temperatures exceed 40 degrees. We can see from the graph that the fall down in the rate of reaction is quite significant when the temperature rises above 40 degrees. In addition to temperature, enzymes are also affected by pH. Enzymes have evolved to work best at the pH level of the cells that they are operating in, which is usually neutral, which is a pH of 7. If the pH level is above or below this, the rate of reaction will fall. The rate of reaction falls because the pH interferes with the bonds holding the enzyme together. So let's have a look at a graph that plots the rate of reaction of enzymes against the pH level. The optimal rate of reaction occurs at a pH level of 7. This is when the solution is neutral. If the solution was acidic, the rate of reaction would fall. And the more acidic the solution is, the lower the rate of reaction for this enzyme would be. Acidic solutions have a pH value between 0 and 7. The closer the pH value of an acidic solution is to zero, the more acidic the solution is and the lower the rate of reaction is. A pH value of a solution between 7 and 14 means that the solution is an alkali. As the pH value approaches 14, the lower the rate of reaction becomes. This is because the solution is a stronger alkali. For most enzymes, the optimal pH is 7. However, the optimal pH depends on what cell the enzyme is operating in. For example, the stomach produces an enzyme called pepsin. The stomach also produces hydrochloric acid, which makes the content of the stomach very acidic. The enzyme pepsin has evolved to work at an optimal pH of 2, which is the pH of the stomach. So usually enzymes work best at an optimal pH of 7, but sometimes this can differ depending on what enzyme we are looking at. So this brings us to the end of this video. For more content, quizzes and past papers, go on to www.elevise.co.uk.